had just filmed the Decade Day video and my makeup remover tried really hard, um, but I caked on that eye makeup, so I look like I'm trying to recreate my emo days now. But this is just what we're going to have to deal with. So I didn't have a lot of time to film for this day, and I also don't have any creative ideas because I wasted all of that on the first day. Um, but I thought it'd be really cool to see if I could find eight books in my library that don't take place in the United States, because that's where I live. Um, and that just seems like it would be a really fun challenge, and it was. I had to really struggle to find books that weren't either in the United States or the United Kingdom, because I have a lot of classics on my shelves and a lot of contemporary young adult novels, and those really only take place in two places. Uh, so I had to really think outside the box, but I think I found eight books that take place in different enough places over the world um, to make this more of a worldwide day. I also tried to pick books that had decent representation, but again, my library itself is pretty limited since I've got mostly classics, so we had to work with what we had. All right, I'm just going to go from how I've pulled them out, so this isn't in any particular order, but the first book is The Scarlet Pimpernel by Baroness Ozy, I think is how it's pronounced, her last name. I looked it up, and it's it's not spelled O-Z, but I think it's pronounced O-Z. And this takes place in England, but mostly in France because it's about the French Revolution. It's actually the first masked hero novel because the Scarlet Pimpernel is like a superhero kind of person who saves people from the guillotine. And this was basically the inspiration for things like Zorro and Spider-Man and Batman. And if you like a rich masked vigilante taking on the law, then you like the Scarlet Pimpernel. You just don't know it yet. So the next one I have not read, but listen to the first sentence of this description. One hot spring, the devil arrives in Moscow, accompanied by a retinue that includes a beautiful naked witch and an immense talking black cat with a fondness for chess and vodka. Okay, I'm down. So this is The Master and Margarita, and it takes place in Moscow. Um, so it's like Soviet 1930s era Russia, and it apparently is pretty popular or famous, I guess, um, but I'm going to hopefully read this soon because it has a talking black cat. I'm a sucker for a talking black cat. The next book takes place in Zimbabwe, and it is by Zizi Dangaremba, and it is called Nervous Conditions, and I'm going to read you the first sentence because it's awesome. I was not sorry when my brother died. This is a good book. It's about a girl named Tambu who tries to be a student and goes to like England to be educated but then it's like what are the pros and cons of leaving your home to become educated is it worth the price of the education but she only gets to go because her brother died it is a really interesting look at gender roles in Zimbabwe and in England and how you know colonization affects people in Africa the next book takes place in the Dominican Republic and in America because it's split it's split in different timelines. It goes from the present to the past, and it's How the Garcia Girls Lost Their Accents by Julia Alvarez. And she is basing this sort of on her real life experiences as a woman who grew up in the Dominican Republic and had to move to America. And it's about four sisters who try to find their way and who they are and how they belong in either of these places. Because is America home? Is the Dominican Republic home? Are they both? Can they both exist within these women? And all four of the women take on completely different viewpoints and it affects them differently. Um, this is a really good book. The next place that we're going to visit is Egypt and we are going to look at Woman at Point Zero by Nawal El Sadawi who is writing about a, it's a fictionalized version about a real story about a prostitute named Firdus in Egypt who killed a pimp and is just willing to die about it because she thinks that she is right. And it is just an interesting exploration of the agency that women can take over their own bodies. Or did Firdus just become a victim of the system where women can really only gain power through selling their bodies? This is a very short book, so if you were able to find it or able to buy it, I highly recommend getting it. It is written beautifully and it just flies by. And you really feel for Firdus. You feel justified in what she did and like her righteous anger in it. Uh, she don't like men. And you know what? Sometimes, same. We're actually going to shift straight from Egypt and go to Toronto in Canada. And I know what you're thinking. That seems like kind of an easy out. I didn't want to do United States or England. I should take Canada off of there too. But I had this one, and she's one of my favorite authors, so it seems fair to include her in some aspect. Um, and it's The Robber Bride by Margaret Atwood. It takes place in Toronto, um, Ontario and just in Canada because it takes place in the lives of three women in their childhoods and their adult lives and this one woman who keeps coming in 
and stealing their men. And it's not as simple as that. That's a really simple explanation, but this thing gets wild. Uh, you'd be surprised at what one woman is capable of is really what this book is about. The next book made me cry. It takes place in Munich in the middle of World War II, and it's about a little girl named Lisa. And if you haven't guessed what it is by that description, it is The Book Thief. And it is very sad, but it is very good. It really is about kind of the innocence of childhood growing up in the middle of World War II and not knowing what's going on because it is told, it's narrated by death, but it's told from the perspective of a little girl and the friends she makes along the way. And, you know, even though some of those friends are a little bit illegal, um, but this is a really, really good book. Uh, I need to reread it again, but it just, I'm not ready for the emotional toll it's going to take on me. The last stop on our tour around the world is Australia. Um, I thought this was kind of fitting. This one is Jellico Road by Melina Marchetta. I don't have a cover on this one because this hardcover is gorgeous. I would not cover it for the world. Um, it is about a girl who, oh, how do I even explain this? There's dual timelines because it's about this girl and named Taylor. It's been years since I've read this book. And she is in a boarding school and there's a rival boarding school and there's a guy and a romance but it's also about her parents and how they grew up and being kids and you don't really know and are aware of all the facts of this book until the very end and it is very sad but it's very cute in places the romance is really good to me i like the mystery of trying to figure out where and how and what her parents were and did and it's just, it's heartbreaking, but it's very good. So that was Around the World in eight books. Let's see if I can remember them all off the top of my head. We did Paris, we did Egypt, we did Zimbabwe, we did Canada, we did Australia, we did, oh no, what else did we do? Oh, the Dominican Republic, and we did Munich. Okay, that's seven. I can't count. Who did I leave out? Ah, 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 we did, um, we did Soviet, Russia. We did Moscow, because Master Margarita. I'm not stupid, I'm just, have winter break brain but that was around the world in eight books um the ones i have read of these i highly recommend and the ones that i haven't well someone read them and tell me what they're about because they seem good